Hi, I'm Teresa Frosini. And I'm Kyle Noonan, and this is Local Fair. It's no secret, Dallas has more restaurants per capita than New York City. Here, a foodie can enjoy some of the most diverse culinary dishes in the world, if they know where to go. That's where we come in. We ask three everyday diners to suggest their favorite restaurant, then have the other two go for a visit and tell us what they think. That's right, we don't use professional restaurant critics here. We use everyday people like you and me. We've got a new lineup on our plate today, so let's see what's cooking this week right here on Local Fair. As always, we're here at Bowling Barrel, which is an awesome place to grab a bite to eat. We'll bowl in a few frames, and it's an excellent place for our reviewers to talk about this week's restaurants. So here's Teresa with this week's guests. Okay, so this week we brought in three people from the DFW area who suggested their favorite restaurant for the others to go visit. Come back here and tell us what they think. Our guests this week are Rico De Leon, an art director from Dallas who suggested Victor Tango's. Samantha Worrell, a financial crime lawyer from Flower Mound who suggested 12 Stones Restaurant. And Lauren Bodden, a writer from Dallas who wanted the group to try Patty's. Our first restaurant this week has a modern yet traditional atmosphere and fantastic food that's sure to keep you coming back for more. Hi, my name is Matt Reagan, the manager at Victor Tango's right off of Henderson in the 75. The restaurant's built for large parties, lots of celebration. Everything's shared plates. We have some small bar bites and then kind of a medium-sized shared plates that are meant for two, three, four people. And then we have these large family-style items come out on big wooden boards. Victor Tango's was one of the first craft cocktail bars in Dallas in 2008 when we first opened up. The cocktail culture in this city has evolved in an amazing way. We are excited to still be pushing envelopes and trying new things, but we also have things that are very accessible. You walk in the door, and it's alive, it's vibrant, the walls pulsate, there's energy and life, but there's no pretension. Everybody's welcome. Anybody that wants to come in and eat, we want them here. It's warm and it's friendly and it's fun. We've got a little something for everybody. Okay, Rico, you talked about Victor Tango's. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what makes this one of your favorite places. Well, I think, you know, they kind of have this, I guess, reputation for having these really good pre-prohibition style cocktails. Or and, nodding. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what initially brought me in. But, you know, after a couple of drinks, I was like, let's sit down and have some food. And, you know, my server just kind of recommended some really phenomenal dishes that have me coming back and have me recommending the place to all my friends. Really? What are some um, of your favorite dishes? I always have to get the, what they call the turkey cob. Mm. But it's like a, imagine like a, turkey, two drum, like turkey legs, mm -hmm. and then a cob salad on the side. But the, the turkey legs are just prepared Is in a way. Is it like a turkey leg, like if you go to the fair? Like, cause I'm, I'm into those turkey <laughs> legs. I like to walk around with it. Well, yeah. I mean, the turkey legs are, are great. They're two turkey legs that aren't like super lathered in like barbecue sauce. Yeah. What are some of your favorite drinks when you go there? Well, I mean, they have several that are just really good, like that are on the cocktail menu. Mm -hmm. But it's like one of those things is if you had a long day and you're in the mood for something, you just be like, hey, I need bourbon in my life. <laughs> Straight up. Now, Lauren, you head was nodding. <laughs> Tell me agreed, how agreed with everything. I agree with everything. So um, when you went and tried the food yeah. and, and the drinks, what'd you like? Well, it's definitely a place I love to take my friends to go hang out. Um, like you said, I think it's a place that has a reputation for being about the drinks and a lot of people don't realize that the food is just amazing. But they had these lamb lollipops that are just, and I'm huge on lamb and I don't think that a lot, like a lot of restaurants serve lamb and they right. do it so well. And then really, it's really good. Yeah. And I have the pepper smash cocktail when I went, um, their service is so good. They're so friendly and you just, I mean, they'll tell you the best things to order. They'll whoop up whatever you want. And it's, it's nice. good. It's awesome. All right, Samantha, how about for you? What did you have? It was my first experience there and, um, I had the duck and the fig, flatbread, flatbread. Yes. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. gorgeous the flavors and that delicious really good surprise and um i also went for the beef short ribs and like you i'm thinking you know slathered in barbecue sauce i was that was such a big surprise and they were delicious it was almost steak like mm. they just kind of shaved at an angle and oh, delicious wonderful all right let's rate this one scale of one to five what how would you rank this five being the highest 
I would give it four and a half. I think I'm going to go more four, and that's just because I'm impatient and being told to wait for an hour and 15. Okay. Was kind of was a bit off Wait was a long time. Yeah. And your favorite item that you had there? Um, the beef short ribs for sure. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Um, so I want to give it a five just because I, I mean, I haven't had a bad experience right. and it's it's great. Um, favorite dish I would have to go with lamb lollipops. All right. Nice. Rico, obviously you love this. Yeah, obviously. I, I have to say a five. I love okay. those guys. I like what they're doing. They're always innovating and, you know, changing things, keeping it fresh. Um, favorite dish has to be, you know, the, the, the turkey leg cob dish. It's just amazing. All yeah. right. Excellent. Thank you for recommending uh -huh. it. When we come back, we'll visit a place with good locally inspired food that's not fussy, but never boring. Upscale food with upscale service in a casual laid back environment and with a neighborhood feel. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state of the art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bull and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bull and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back to Local Fair, where we take three regular DFW restaurant goers. We have them suggest their favorite restaurant, have the other two go for a visit, and then they all come back here and tell us what they think. Samantha Worrell says, 12 Stones Restaurant has a varied menu where even standard items are given an innovative touch. Hi, I'm David Burdick. I'm the executive chef at 12 Stones Restaurant in Flower Mound, Texas. My wife and I have lived here in Flower Mound for 13 years. We went to create a restaurant that was a fabric of the neighborhood. We do a seasonal inspired menu and it's basically our spin on new American cuisine. We have a seasonal bar menu as well, handcrafted cocktails. We do a lot of prohibition style cocktails that have some really nice clean liquors in them. We also have a lot of boutique wines that you won't find, small family owned vineyards that we like to feature in our restaurant. We have a wine room. You can have up to 15 people. It's fantastic for either a business meeting or a special family occasion. I had a fantastic designer, Hatsumi Kuzu, an industrial farm motif is what we went for, with a little bit of modern twist to it. Great food in a relaxed environment. Okay, Samantha, tell me about 12 Stones. Um, well, I love it because it's a piece of the city in the suburbs. You know, we've got a lot of chain restaurants, and so when that opened up, um, I think in 2013, I was so excited. It's chef-owned, it's, you know, the description of it, fresh food, you know, the chef thinks about every dish and, you know, putting a twist on it. I was so excited to hear that I don't always have to come into Dallas proper to get that kind of food. I always have the calamari, I just can't resist it. I mean, I love calamari anyway, but there's a, I can't identify it, like five spice cinnamon taste to it and the sauce has like a acidic tang to it, so it just really balances it and it's just thin, it's so Moorish. I mean, it's delicious. The bartender's great, you know, you sit there and say, I don't know what I feel like and he'll you know give you suggestions and when I was in there the other day he said okay can you try, can you taste this for me I'm working on something so he's like nice. so I, how is that going to taste you know just, uh, the jicama salad you know you think with a pomegranate dressing it's like, what's that? and it's like marmalade and mm. you just don't know how it's going to taste it's almost a it's like a up class you know a high class Willy Wonka's chocolate factory like what taste am I going to get from <laughs> this particular dish you know because now, had you ever been there before? No, and I mean, it's Flower Mound is a little bit of a drive, and mm -hmm. it's funny because you you pull up and it's in a shopping center, and you're like, wow, I just drove this far, and it's I don't know <laughs> what to expect, center, right? And like, but then you walk in, and it's just the decor, the lighting, and everything. It's it's so cool, and mm. uh, yeah, like their their menu offers so much. I got the fried avocado um, starter. It, it was awesome. That's And I mean, great. I feel like I'm eating healthy because it's avocado. Sure. So yeah, went with that. <laughs> and then it comes with this jalapeno ranch type dip. Mm -hmm. uh, dip. And then um, it was funny because we were kind of taking the bread and just dipping and then and they try to take away and we're like, no, can we keep it? <laughs> but um, I had the jicama salad too. And it was, it was great. It's really fresh, so good. Um, nice. We had, they had a duck cherry flatbread there as well. So we had that and it was, it was really good. And we went for lunch. 
which you is You got to sample yeah. quite a few things then. There, I, so, I eat a lot. No, I I didn't get dessert, Ooh. and I mean, oh, yeah. Maybe I have to go back. Rico, how about Next you? Time. Did you try dessert? I didn't have dessert. Well, I had some cocktails, so I, I think that okay. counts. That maybe. counts, <laughs> yes. Uh, the Scots Old Fashioned is a really just solid, solid old fashioned. I was I didn't know what to expect, and I saw the the old fashioned. I mean, he's like, you know what? That's a standard. Let's see how it's done. Done very well. Excellent. Um, I also had the crab cakes. Mm. I'm a sucker for crab cakes. Yeah. So they're they're twists on it with a little bit of avocado and uh, I think it was cilantro or basil. I definitely recommend that if you guys are heading out that way. It's so good. How, what would you rate this one on a scale from one to five? I would like for me because I'm not in Flower Mound. Like that's. Yeah. Too suburbia for me. You have to cross but, 635. Yeah, that's you know outside the bubble. <laughs> but you know, it, if I was in the area, that would be a go-to. I, I would definitely at least give it like four to four and a half. Okay. Yeah, totally. And your favorite thing that you had there? The crab cakes. Got it. Really All right, good. Lauren, how about you? I, I mean, same. I feel like just because I'm not right in Flower Mountain, it's a bit of a drive. Yeah. I would probably give it a four. Um, I mean, it's a great restaurant, and I feel like I have to go for dinner and try the steak. I want to get the calamari, um, yeah, but the the fried avocados were Favorite. so good. Yeah. All right, one to five. How would you rate this one? I'm going to give it a five. I love it. And yeah. obviously, calamari yeah. is your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a twist on everything. It's fantastic. It. Thank so, yeah. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. When we come back, we'll take a trip to the Low Country for some traditional recipes with a fresh modern twist. The cooking and the hospitality that we all grew up with, with our parents and our grandparents. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bull and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bull and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back. Our last restaurant sticks to what they know. Food, comfort, hospitality, and grits. Hi, my name's Hal Dantzler. I'm the co-owner at Hattie's Restaurant here in the Bishop's Arts District in Dallas. We are on the forefront of the gourmet comfort food genre. We like to think of ourselves as kind of a Carolina low country cuisine. The personality we were looking for was something that really took comfort food and the idea of comfort food and home cooking. We wanted to make it a little more elegant, a little more modern in a way, with utilizing the ingredients that are fresh and that are local. We had a certain footprint we had to stay within. And I love the efficiency of space in Europe in a lot of their restaurants and bars. So we tried to mirror that here. So our front bar is very small, but we have a few really amazing cocktails. Comforting food, comforting atmosphere, and hospitality. Okay, Lauren, tell me about Hattie's. Um, I mean, I love Hattie's. It's been around forever. It's in the Bishop Art District, which is just a great area. Great area. Um, they do American Southern comfort food, but they do it so well. And I mean, it's really, you just feel really classy eating there. It's so chic inside. It's so classy. I mean, I like that. I'm going to chow down, but I'm going to feel classy while I'm doing it. I so, love it. what's but, your favorite? What do you like to get there? Um, they have amazing pork chops. It's done so well. Um, you do like yeah. meat. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but no, I mean, they have pork chops, fried green tomatoes, fried mm. chicken. I mean, it's hard to go wrong on the menu. It's so good. And they're so attentive there. It's Yeah, you I love, love it. it. Mm -hmm. You love it. Samantha, how, tell me about when you tried Hattie's. Um, Had you been before? No, I've okay. never been. I've never been. And it's, um, it's got a very homely feel to it. It feels very southern, you know, so I really like that element. It's it. funny to hear you say southern. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's got like a harvest house. But um, it's so funny that it was the, wait the waiter describing the specials. He just had the, I wanted to eat everything. He kind of leaned in and say, 
tonight we have an Alaskan halibut and you know it's a <laughs> zucchini. I, I was like, I want that. No, I want that. It was fantastic. Oh, what did you end up getting? Um, I I went for the shrimp and grits just because when mm, I asked about it, I was being told that that was like yes. the main staple. So it was good. It was good. But I do wish I'd gotten the special the Alaskan halibut that we have served tonight. Yeah, it was so it was really flavorful. So you know. So somebody else on the table got it, so you know I got. Did you get to try yeah. some of it then? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, good. A little bit of the catfish and mm. not so great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A little bland for me, but you know, the the halibut dish was good. Sounds like you like the atmosphere a lot. Yeah, okay. yeah, I did, I did, and the dessert so, was good too. You know? What did you have for dessert? I, I had a sample of everything, so I tried a bit of strawberry shortcake, mm -hmm. the banana caramel bread pudding. Mm -hmm. And the um, molten chocolate cake as well. So, Ooh, yeah, yum. it's that kind of homey, you know, if you go home, sure. you know, to your parents, to to your grandparents. Parents. I take my parents. Yeah, yeah. it's like it, if you yeah. want a home cooked meal and that kind of feeling. So, nice. not so much well, but definitely a home kind of comfort. Comfort sure. food, for sure. Rico, how about for you? What do you think? Well, I mean, you guys bring up that it's like a great place to bring your parents. I bring a party when I go there. I love the food. <laughs> Rico, you bring a party <laughs> everywhere, I think. I, I, you know, I'm not a, I'm okay with that. Um, That's good. But yeah. she had the sample of the desserts. I had the sample of the brunch cocktails, which are awesome. Nice. So did you, you did brunch then? Yeah, I, had, I went through a brunch party there. Nice. Big slew of friends went. But we did, I had the mimosa, which is solid. Their, their house made um, Bloody Mary, the house made like, I guess. Is it good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really yes? good. Okay. So good. It's worth. It's not always you, Bloody Marys are not always good. Yeah. They're not all created equal. No. I'm just saying that way. And they do have a good wine selection there as well. I was Absolutely. really impressed and they really knew mm. their wines as well and what to recommend. Nice. I was very impressed by that. Did you eat at brunch? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I did just drink. <laughs> I'm just checking. I, I ate some food. It was good. Um, I've had the shrimp and grits there on times and uh, you brought the pork chops. That's also good. I, um, I think. As another staple, like the shrimp and grits, is the chicken fried steak. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just solid, good, home cooking style, but Excellent. with a touch of elegance and class. Like, you That's walk it, in, yeah. nice. you walk in with white tablecloths, you know, it feels like, okay, I should be wearing like a bow tie or something <laughs> when I walk in. But it's yeah. actually really nice and it just makes you feel like at home. How would you rate this one on a scale from one to five? I have to say a five. It's and your just... favorite dish or drink? Dish, probably the shrimp and grits. All right. I know. Let's have you rate this scale of one to five. Um, it was very filling, that was for sure. I st I'm gonna give it a four and a half. Okay, yeah. all right. And your favorite thing that you had? The special halibut. The halibut was yeah, your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> all right, obviously you recommended this yeah, one. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm generous. I love it. I'll give it a five. Uh, favorite dish is so hard, just because it's all so good. Probably the pork chop. The pork chop. I love Perfect. my meat. <laughs> that's that. Thank you so much, Lauren. All right, you want to learn how you can make one of these delicious meals we've discussed today? Well, when we come back, our restaurant expert, Kyle Noonan, will show you how to do just that. Stay with us. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bull and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bull and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. All right, gang, welcome back. We're coming from the landmark on Lover's Kitchen, as always, this beautiful kitchen that I love cooking it. And one of the highlights of this episode was our jicama salad. And jicama is not something that most people are familiar with, so I'm gonna educate you guys. This is a jicama. Now, when you go to buy them in the store, you're gonna see that these that jicama can get pretty big, almost cantaloupe size. I would recommend staying away from the big jicama because it kind of starts to lose flavor after a while, the sugars start to go away. And the way this tastes is it's, it's really um, almost like an apple and a potato having a baby. That's kind of what we're working with here. And it's a little funky on the outside, but it's really sweet on the inside. Um, here it is pre-cut and it's, mm, it's good. So all we're gonna do is just peel it, use a regular vegetable peeler to take the skin off. You don't need to wash it. Um, and just go ahead and peel, peel the skin off. Be careful not to nick your finger because uh, that happens to me almost all the time, um, unfortunately, but it's worth it by the time you get to this sweet fruit in the middle. It's really nice. Now, jicama is typically from, used in Latin America uh, and Mexican cuisine. So that's typically where you're gonna see it grown in Mexico, Central America, 
Um, but you start seeing it here more and more in the States, and you can buy it at any grocery store. Uh, and all we're going to do is finish taking that skin off. Perfect. There we go. And just make sure you don't have any more black spots. Now, if you do see any, any soft spots or wet spots on the skin at the grocery store, that's a sign of rot. So you don't want a rotten jicama, so stay away from that. You want a nice, firm, brand new jicama. Now, we can julienne this through the old-fashioned way, a knife, but I like this, this handy tool that you can find at any cookware store called a mandolin. It's also referred to as a Chinese mandolin, and it's a way to get uniform-looking julienne strips of any kind of vegetable um, very easily, and it makes you look like you have really good knife skills. So all I'm going to do is take this jicama, cut it in half, and then run it through the, run it through the mandolin. Okay, there we go. We just, all we're going to do is take this. Now what I've also done is I've taken some red bell peppers, some yellow bell peppers, some cilantro and red onion, and I've done the same thing. I've just run it through the mandolin to get a nice even sticks. The, 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 the idea here really is that you get even pieces when you mix this salad. So all we're going to do is take those ingredients, throw it in a bowl, get a couple of spoons, so we can mix. And then for the dressing, it's very simple. Take honey, just a little local honey. I love local honey to add a little bit more sweetness. Pinch of salt. And then you gotta have some acid. So we're gonna throw some limes in there. And I like to use about three, two to three limes, depending on how juicy they are. These don't seem to be too stingy a lime. I'm getting a lot of juice out of there. So it should be a nice, bright, fragrant, flavorful salad. That's it. So now we're going to just toss this up. Just get those all integrated, all the ingredients coated in the honey, the lime, the salt. Just make sure that that stays together. And this really, this dish is great on just as a starter. It's also a great side item. If you, you know, grill a steak out in the summertime, backyard barbecue, then just put this on the side of the steak. It's just a great, fresh, vibrant salad. And then the last thing, when you go back to plate, and you can just throw it back on the same plate because you're not using any raw ingredients. You know, instead of just dumping, you want to kind of build that salad. Make it look nice and neat. Use your, use your spoons to kind of prop it up. And then what I like to do is take it just a little bit more salt and just go ahead and garnish with a couple sprigs of cilantro as well just to give it that, that nice little bit of color and freshness. And that right there, my friends, is a heck of a jicama salad. So that's it for this week, and if you would like to be a guest on Local Fair, visit us at our website at localfairdfw.com or check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for joining us, and remember, get out and enjoy your local fair. <laughs>